I'm Olivia Robertson, and I'm ready to be your guide through the initiation of the planet Mars and the goddess Morrigan. Now, you don't have to be initiated, though who knows what may happen in your inner mind, but I suggest that you join with us as the Fellowship of Isis and become a companion to our candidate. To do this, first of all, make a prayer to the deity of your own religion. Everything you love, nature, whatever you turn to. Now, you can pause for a moment and get a cup of water and put it by you. And you might light an incense stick, draw the curtains and find a really comfortable place to sit. Now, in the name of Brigid, or any deity you suggest, like the Lady of the Lake, put water on your brow to help your psychic vision. It does help to activate the third eye. Good, you've done that. Now, this, the Fellowship of Isis, is multi-religious. It belongs to all traditions. At the moment, our College of Isis has three hierophants assembled here who are adept at guiding people through cosmic consciousness, through various degrees of consciousness. We have here, you've probably heard of Kathleen Matthews, who's an expert on the Holy Grail mysteries and has written 15 books on the subject and is a very skilled practitioner at helping the soul through various tests. So this is very suitable for her. And we have another, uh, her lyceum, by the way, is called Dome Sophia Terre at Sancte Gradale, which means, of course, home of the divine wisdom of earth and the Holy Grail. And Vivian Vernon Jones is here, who's a priestess hierophant of the Lyceum of Dea Draconis S. Colombe of the College of Isis, and she also is a skilled practitioner in guiding souls through trance, and both ladies offer correspondence courses. And then there's Felicity Aldridge, a candidate for the hierophancy, this very evening. And uh, she is to be ordained and made Hierophant of the Goddess of Justice, Australia, and her Lyceum will be the Lyceum of Australia. Now there is Brian Burgess, the candidate, a new member, along with another new member who's also welcome, Lord Lynn Elson. And my brother Lawrence Sturden Robertson is giving his blessing because he always joins in our rituals. Now, if you want to get in touch with the Fellowship of Isis, you can write to me, or indeed to any of these ladies, and I will forward your letters, Clonigal Castle, Enniscorthy, South Ireland. The time is coming when you are to begin your adventure. Use the creative imagination you stand outside the castle gateway. It looms above you with its crenellations against the darkening sky of evening. Great trees are above us and a few stars of early evening are sparkling. The candidate Brown wears a white robe and a white hood partly concealing his face. I am robed as guide the psychopompus, and therefore I hold the caduceus of Mercury, which is a staff with two serpents entwining it, crowned with a globe and two wings. You are also robed and are expectant, because you identify now with Brown. In our time and place, and in your time and place, we are in union. We wish him well. 
we knock at the door three times. A robed figure throws open the door. He is wearing a violet robe and his face is hooded. He lifts up a hand with an amethyst ring and he beckons us inside the castle. Below we hear distant music right below our feet in a basement we did not know existed, which is the temple of Isis. And there in the depths of the castle is the well at the world's end. And the Reverend Lawrence Durden Robertson is even now speaking of the magical properties of this holy well. And the enchantress is anointing each brow as you did, wishing each person awakened psychic and spiritual vision. Now our guide leads us down long, long passages so that we lose our way. Then we begin to descend stone steps that move in a spiral way. And we hear the sound of a bell. This welcomes us in. This is our sign that we may enter. And we see a procession pass us at the foot of the long, steep stairway, headed by the priest Hierophant, Lawrence Durden Robertson, in Egyptian high headdress, black and blue with a golden serpent, and black and blue academic robes. He is followed by the priesthood. The Magus wears a high, glittering bronze crown set with a ruby jewel and lo long flowing red robes. She is followed by the enchantress who wears her high silver crown and violet robes. The other priestesses wear flame-colored robes and the priests have Egyptian-style headdresses all either gold or red or deep violet. They glide past us down a long passage of nine pillars in the form of an L. They then pass out of our sight. We begin to smell the heady smell of incense. We follow our guide round this L-shaped, past myriad candles until we face two pillars. Between the two pillars is an altar draped in red and gold and a canopy of four golden columns surmounted by a crown. Beneath this crown stands a wooden statue of Isis of 10,000 names holding the sun upon her head within the horns of the moon and a golden crystal in one hand, the other upheld in blessing. Upon the altar is a bowl of water, and now we see the source of the incense, whose smoke is ascending into the sky, weaving upwards. We catch a glimpse of trees through stained glass. Now it is my duty as psychopompus to invoke the goddess Morrigan. Who is this Morrigan? She is the great queen, she is good, she is loving, but as she has within her the power of the lioness, the power of the serpent, the power of Kundalini, she can be dangerous to those who misuse her power with ill will, for she is the inner power of Mars. I lift up my arm. Triple goddess, who art maid and queen and enchantress, red-robed wife to the Dagda of the fiery god of Mars, raven-tressed prophetess, 
was the river of life and death flowing about thy feet. Come to us with thy power. And now we see to one side of the altar a woman entirely veiled in black. We face the oracle, the Pythoness. She who will give us the oracle of the Morrigan. Seek the prophetic gift, and all else will be added to you. For in my future lies both my present and my past. For the greater contains the lesser, and in my great age of eons lies my youth and my queenship. To hold the sword of the ruler is good, but it is wisdom that declares how the sword shall be used. And it is the compassion of the Virgin that sheathes the sword. The hollow of the scabbard contains the sword as the womb of the mother contains the kingly warrior. So, if you would be great, look before you into your future. For there you shall be in your fullness and completion, ruler of many cells. And foreknowledge even of doom teaches the inevitable sequence of cause and effect, the result of good and evil actions, so that you will learn to pursue a virtuous and honourable course in life. Knowledge of my secret of sudden death brings understanding of your own immortality. My right foot stands firm upon the earth as I stand over the dividing river of life and death. My left foot is rooted in the land of the she and the world of spirits, yet am I ever the same. If you see me in my innocent youth washing your clothes from all stain and sorrow, do not be afraid, but cross by the stepping stones of my ford to the other world. Know that those who accept me may return again safely to earthly life. Return because you must, as I call you to arduous service in the world, where I am queen. As such, I am both wife and mother, and desire that the earth should be replenished with my children. But when I appear to you as the Ancient One, your initiation is nigh. Then you too will feel the inner fire, and shall prophesy and people will flee from you as they flee from me, for the children of men fear enchantment more than they fear pain and death. But for you, enchantment will draw forth your greater being, which is immortal. Remember, my messenger is the blue-black raven. me to bring forth the candidate. He bravely steps between the two pillars and faces the sword. Come, come with me. Now the Magus, in violet robes, with the insignia of Mars, red with an arrow, coming forth makes the sign of Mars with his great star. I invoke the god Ares. Ares giveth outer strength. Behold the golden arrow of the sun flying from the ring of power. Ares, exceeding in strength. Chariot rider, Golden helm, doughty in heart, saviour of cities, 
thou art defender of Olympus, father of warlike victory, ally of the goddess of justice, Themis, leader of righteous men, sceptered king of manliness, thou dost whirl thy fiery spear among the planets in their sevenfold courses through the ether, wherein thy blazing steeds ever bear thee above the third firmament of heaven, here as helper of man, giver of dauntless youth, shed down a kindly ray from above upon our lives, and give strength for victory that we may be able to drive away bitter cowardice from our heads and crush down the deceitful impulses of our souls. Restrain also the keen fury of our hearts, which provokes us to tread the ways of blood-curdling war. Rather, O Blessed One, give us boldness to abide within the harmless laws of peace, avoiding strife and hatred and the violent, the violent fiends of death. Now the enchantress steps forth with her silver crown, violet robes with the sign of the goddess of Mars, which is a heart pierced by an arrow, a crimson heart pierced by a golden arrow, and she lifts up her wand I invoke the goddess Morgan. Behold the golden arrow entering the crimson heart. Triple goddess, who art virgin, noble queen, and the enchantress, who on thy loom weaveth the destiny of all creatures. Raven goddess, robed in red, bringeth the ecstasy of creation. Thine is power, thine is glory, for it is from thy being that we receive the fiery spark in our souls. Come within us with thy life-giving power. Let the candidate stand forth. The candidate now stands forth before the Mega. And you, if you are willing, come with him. Are you willing to face the tests of the sun god Luch of the Tuha de Danen? The candidate lifts up his right hand. I am willing. Three choices must be made, and on your answers hang your destiny. Now it is your time to be companion to the candidate. Hearken to the first choice you must make. In your life, which do you choose to serve? The god Ares, god of Mars, who is god, the god Dagda the Red, or the goddess Morrigan? This is a most important decision to make in your life. Are you going to be a fighter, a spiritual fighter if you like? Are you going to stand up to evil circumstances in the outer world and with your flaming sword of spirit fight evil in it with its own weapons? Are you a leader? Are you a pioneer? Think of this. What is the other choice given to you. What does the Mor Morrigan offer you? Do you have to turn your back on evil as you meditate, as you look within, as you turn away from the outer world and seek the inner divine world which some people say does not exist? Why should you be interested in the other world, the world you may have come from, the world you may ascend to? which we have invoked the Morrigan, maybe the Veiled One holds the answer to all the terrible problems that Mars fights, Mars fights, but maybe the Morrigan always wins. In silence now, 
Make your choice. The path of creative activity or the inner spheres. made your choice. It's not forever. Maybe you'll change your mind. However, the candidate is also making his choice. Candidate, hearken to your first choice. Who do you choose to serve? The god Ares, who is also the god Dagda, the Red, or the goddess Morrigan. I choose to serve the Morrigan. The warriors of the past have reaped of the glories and sufferings of Ares. The, ki the hero Cúhulain has won his laurels through the Dagda, king of the Tuatha Dé Danann. I turn rather to the hidden powers within the soul. The outer is the manifestation of the inner, so I gain Ares by serving the goddess. Wise is your choice. Great Ares will bestow strength on all who follow the goddess, and this is necessary. Know that when the Morrigan, the Melusina, ascends from the fiery core of the earth, there comes a column of black smoke like unto the trunk of a giant tree, and this tree grows until it reaches the sky, and its spreading branches scatter fiery flowers of many colors, and they in turn drop gold and silver fruit. When you face the rising of this black tree with its starry flowers and fruit with courage and calm, you shall win the name of Son of Luke. You will then be offered one of the four treasures of the Tuthidinan, the folk of the gods whose mother is Donna, came on a cloud out of the heavens from four cities in the sky named Phalias, Gorias, Phineas, and Murius. From Phalias the deities brought the Lea Flail, the Stone of Destiny. The Sword of Light they bore from Gorias. From Phineas the spear was taken. And from Murius they brought the cauldron of plenty. Now hearken to your second choice. Which do you accept of these treasures? The spear which brings both victory and healing is given by Ares and the Dagda husband of the Morgan, so only the three gifts of the goddess are now offered to you. I would first know the properties of these wonderful treasures brought from heavenly cities by the deities. The first of these treasures is the cauldron of plenty, which is bestowed by Morrigan the maid, who is called Baal, the crow. The Baal appears to, to heroes in all her youthful loveliness, 
as the washer by the ford. And the ford is found in that river which is at the world's end in the west. For beyond it lies the realm of the Shi, called Tiernamorg, land of everlasting youth. This country is invisible to mortal eye and lies below, upon, and above the mighty western ocean that once overwhelmed Atlantis. Its bells may be heard from the deeps, and the sound of maidens singing entice sailors to cast themselves from their ships to seek lost beauty. And the purple mountains reach into the sky with rainbow shafts of light that are pathways to the stars. When, in your wanderings, you may come upon the bath by a ford, washing dust and blood from your earthly armour, know that your time has come to cross the river of death to the other realm of the Shi. But do not fear. Her cauldron of plenty holds the food and drink of immortality. The Divine Virgin is ever compassionate. For those in need, the cauldron is never empty. The stone of rulership is bestowed by Morrigan, the great queen, the Maka. In her union with Dagda the Good, she has one foot upon the north bank of the river of life and death, and her other foot is upon the south bank, and she faces the rising sun. So is she queen of earth, and all who sit upon the Maka's seat of authority are her sons and daughters and derive their thrones from her. What has the raven goddess Morrigan, the main hag, to offer? Heroes follow fair maidens and stately queens rather than she who has been turned the frenzied crow. There were two slender spears of battle upon either side of the hag. Her face was blue-black, the luster of coal. On her forehead, one deep pool-like eye, swifter than a star in a winter sky. Upon her head, gnarled brushwood, like the clawed old wood of aspen root. It is Namain, the Kaliak, who indeed gives the sword of light by plunging it into the hero's heart. For does she not foretell the death of kings, and so throw the bravest into despair? She has been seen in the posture of the enchantress, standing upon one leg, closing one eye, uttering oracles of the fall of kingdom. Now the travellers saw coming to them a wide-mouthed, black, swift, sooty woman, lame and squinting with her left eye. She wore a threadbare blue-black coat, dark as the black back of a stag beetle was every joint of her, from the top of her head to the ground. Her filleted grey hair fell back over her shoulder and she began to prophesy doom. My friend, this is becoming rather real, is it not? You feel like Paris of Troy. Which do you choose? Joy. Joy of love and youth and happiness and flowery fields and the beauty of simple, spontaneous nature, all that in you loves to run barefoot in the grass. That is the lovely cauldron of plenty, full of beautiful herbs. On the other hand, you are offered the stone of destiny on which kings and queens are crowned. The stone of destiny gives you power and authority and in this way you can order the salvation of rainforests, you can forbid people to pollute the oceans, you can command and have the good. Who would not do such things rather than just enjoy themselves? What about this sword that plunges into the heart? It is said and it is hard to believe but there are power centers within our own bodies and these can only awaken when they are pierced by rays of light. This 
is the inner wisdom of the aged Morrigan. This is the power of magic, whereby her power, the power of the Morrigan, rises up in the spine and brings the golden wheels of your own bodies to rotate so that you know the realm of the gods. temple of Isis and you face the choice whether you will have the cauldron of joy or the stone of power or the sword of spiritual awakening in silence meditate and make your decision the three Morrigans do you follow? Which treasure do you choose? I choose the Kaliak, Namain the Morrigan, for it is told that when the goddess Dana 
glorious mother of the gods and goddesses of the Tuatha de Dano, defended them in a battle. The vanquished people of the Fomor recognized De Dana as none other than the Morrigan. The victors have their triumph. Understanding comes to the defeated. And in choosing the Kaliak, I have also gained the maiden and the queen. For does not the old woman contain her own two past selves? I choose her sword that I may learn to use its hidden power with wisdom and compassion. It is well chosen. But the third choice must be made ere you may draw the sword. At this moment, I lead the candidate and yourself, but before the sword itself. The Magi lifts up the sword in both her hands, the Mega of Wisdom. Which do you choose, the sword or its scabbard richly encrusted with many coloured jewels? This now, my friend, is your third choice and it is no mean one, for you are as King Arthur when Merlin made him choose. Arthur was shown a sword, Excalibur, and by it lay its scabbard, richly encrusted with jewels, and I suspect various runes. Arthur chose the sword, and his wife, Guinevere, rather than his sister, Morrigan and Merlin, and his son, his son by hand fasting, Mordred. And he became a mighty hero of king, who is long awaiting. Luke of Era, on the other hand, chose the scabbard, look of the long right arm, and became one of the gods of Erin. The gleaming sword, or the scabbard. In silence, make your choice. have made the choice and this will mark out your destiny. The candidate stands gazing upon the sword and the scabbard in profound meditation.
him the mega asked him the fatal question what do you choose the sword or its scabbard richly encrusted with many colored jewels I choose the scabbard for the greater contains the lesser the power that glitters from the sharp edge of the sword is in reality drawn from the magic gem gems on the scabbard and they in turn draw their radiance from the scabbard's dark hollow that may be likened to the womb of the morrigan thou hast chosen with true vision and shall henceforth be known as son of lu of the long white arm for so did the sun god lu of the tooth of and gain his sword of light yes this was the choice that lu made now the enchanter sweeps forward holding the sword and presents it to the candidate whatever choice you made it was true for you so you accept that which you are given noble enchantress and mega i know that all good come from the three that the one may not be tyrant Thrice consecrate then this sword and this scabbard, the body and soul and spirit. So his holiness obtained through both Mars and the Morrigan. Not only the one and the three, but the four are needed, that the mystic seven powers may weave the spell of creation. As the Mega utters these words. all the company assembled priesthood and the companions form a beautiful maze dance and as they weave to and fro the beautiful melody a lovely bard in flowing green robes her head crowned with leaves steps forth and make magical music this now to the song that is song of cavadua regantona the mighty morrigan the queen i am the rage i am the wildness i was the and the queen's quietness I am wildness I am wilderness I will so am a creeping closure I am the light in the darkness I also am the curtain of dawn I am the valley that's uprooting I also am the rocks reborn I am the wheeling flighting carrion I also am the gentle ram I am the toothed and darting weasel. I am the white doe of the fen. I am the mountain rock in motion. I also am the patient stone. I am the scurrying stream for four times. I also am the gentle rain. Here is no shelter, but my cloak is ready. Here is no defense, yet my shield is steady. I lance but my wings shall against your heart my own you shall be master of my every act now we join in this joyful dance you in your time and space in your spirit dance with joy the colors you see are flame and red and orange and yellow and gold and as in your soul you dance you feel a tingling energy pouring up from the earth from the inner earth of the morrigan up your spine through your 
soles of your feet and through your hands and you exchange energy with all beings and bright power descends upon you from the celestial dharma and you feel alive and glorious feel this power now running right through you in silence feel it circulate through your body the life force has now built up within all of us in our time and space and in you so that now our two ceremonies our two ritual ma magical rites have become one the mega steps forward in her flowing robes and she holds forth the scabbard with its sparkling jewels and she turns it three times in her hand. In the name of the goddess Morrigan, I consecrate this scabbard with the fivefold spell of the she of fire and earth. May each gem give forth its true power in harmony with the seven. The enchantress now steps forth she unsheathes the sword and she dips the point in the bowl of water upon the altar. Then she steps before all and bandishes it in the air three times. In the name of the goddess Morrigan, I consecrate this sword of fire with the twofold spells of the she of water and of air. May each give forth their true powers in harmony with the seven. So did the two serpents of sun and moon twine about sword and scabbard in ever-living light. The enchantress now hands the sword to the candidate. In your imagination, you can accept it. He holds it aloft, and as he does so, his hood falls off, revealing his head. Upon it is a bronze circlet. In the name of the goddess Morrigan, may all beings receive power and peace. In the name of the goddess Morrigan, I declare you to be an Anisius of the College of Isis, of the Fellowship of Isis. 
I take now holy oil from the altar and I anoint the top of his head, his brow and his two hands and I anoint both sword and scabbard. I tell the candidate Draw now the point of your sword around all this company. We shall all, I say to our friend of the future who listens, and to us now, the coloured rays are seen, reaching the auras of each one of us. As we do this, we send forth thoughts in silence to anyone or any cause that we would bless with the power of Mars and the Morrigan. The candidate now does this. Try and visualize any lights you can see, my friend, with your closed eyes. be blessed in the name of the Morrigan, all this company here present, all on our rainbow network of our fellowship and all religions and faiths, those who turn to the good, animals, birds, reptiles, fishes, insects, trees, especially the great rainforests, this earth herself. Now, the candidate shall sheathe the sword. Both are one. Man and woman are one. The goddess and her children are one. The god and his children are one. Sun and moon are one. Mars and all the planets are one. Let this sheathed sword be our pledge of amity with all. All of us now pass before the sheathed sword, placing both our hands upon it in sign of amity. gives thanks to the goddess. Let us give thanks to the goddess Morrigan for all her power and peace. May our new Elysius, Brown, give thanks to the god Mars. May we give thanks to the great and mighty god Ares for the glory and friendship of the planet Mars. May the Enchantress give thanks to the Divine Sophia. 
we give thanks to Divine Sophia for the inspiration of this day. May the precepts of this prayer give thanks to the goddess for peace and justice, friend of the morrow. I give thanks to Astraea, goddess of peace and justice, and friend of the Morrigan. May peace be with us all. May our friend give thanks to the goddess of I give thanks to the goddess of the death, who is the protectress of the deepest wisdom that we found in our own hearts. Always, when you have done a trance journey, and you maybe have been slightly in trance, you must come back, as these will do. So now, we will watch the priesthood leave. They will leave first. We will stand in the shadows. First, the Reverend Lawrence Durden Robertson is leaving, followed by the priesthood. We watch them slowly pass along a long line of columns. The guardian is snuffing out the candles with a long snuffer. The candidate now follows them. We stay behind for a moment or so. We feel at peace with one another. For we are friends in another way through attunement. The passing ritual is over, but it is always there for us when we choose to think of it. Come now and rise with me. We go along past the columns, up the winding stone stairway, up and up, out of the dark temple. Now we reach at the outside of the castle. We pass through all these passages. The sounds have ceased, the music, the scent of incense is gone. We are out of doors, the trees are around us, and now it is night time. We see the great avenue leading down away from the castle. It is time now for us to say goodbye. So I will leave this castle and come to you. I'm with you, and I want you to come back properly. Make a sound as we did entering the castle. Two, now one. Come back. Now I want you to drink a glass of water and go off and have a cup of tea and something to eat. And after any trance, however light, don't go out into the street for a bit. Hang around for about three quarters of an hour. The others are busy disrobing and putting on their everyday clothes. And I want you to do that psychologically. You may love the beautiful and ancient hymns. They came from Hesiod, the Homeric hymns in America, and get those at Heinemann. Myths and Legends of the Celtic Race by Wollaston, who wrote in the 19th century, Harrop, 1911 is our copy. You can get later ones. Pagan Celtic Britain by Anne Ross, Rutledge and Keegan Paul, and Columbia, and many, many other books on these subjects. We thank you, all of us, you who have been with us for listening. Goodbye, and the goddess be with you. <laughs>